project, you're going to create a collection of three different patterns that work together utilizing unity and variety within shape and your color choices. You're going to learn along the way how to use Adobe Illustrator to um, use and some graphic design tools for piecing these digital patterns together. Um, first though, you're going to work in some traditional media and make some marks in your sketchbook. Um, Here's an example of what I was playing around with. I was using India ink and a few different kinds of brushes and just making, having fun making some marks, seeing what different shapes I could create kind of spontaneously and freely. So that's a process that I'll ask you to try out first as well. Um, whatever you use to make your marks, try, try to find um, something that is black and something that is bold. So India ink worked really well here. You could also try something like Sharpie, a brush pen, um, or acrylic paint, maybe even some watercolor if you kind of keep it relatively thick. Um, so now that I, after I played around with it, I took a picture of my page and I want um, you to do the same thing and notice that when you take your picture, you want to be zoomed into the page so that there's nothing in the background. I only see the paper, the white paper in the background and the marks. No edge of the book, no none of the tabletop, because all of that will um, make for a challenge later in these next steps. So get to a point where you have something like this, although your marks will hopefully look totally different and you might have several pages. Um, open up Illustrator once you get to that point and to start just understanding um, the layout pull this over um, the top I have different tabs open you will just work with one uh -oh. so that's what these are here um, Let me just start with a new file. How about that? So when you open up Illustrator, you'll go to File, New. And for today, just click on Letter. So it'll give us about the size of a printer paper. We've got tools over on the left toolbar, various things that you can play around with. The one that you're going to use um, the most is this selection tool up here. You can just click on it from the keyboard to give you this tool, or you can hit on your, excuse me, you can click on it on the toolbar over here, or you can hit the letter V on your keyboard um, and it will bring you straight to that tool. So each of these tools, if you hover over them, it tells you what it is called and it gives you in the um, brackets, it'll give you the keyboard shortcut if you like to use those like I do. Um, bunch of different menus up here, which we'll use. The help is really great because if you're looking for a particular thing that you're not sure how to do, um, it'll show you exactly where to find it in the menus. Um, that is if you know the name of the tool. Over on this side, you've got a variety of different um, menus. Yours might not look exactly like this, but you can grab these menus and move them around. They don't have to stay static the way the default is. So you can adjust your workspace. And I'm gonna recommend just simplifying for what we're doing and have swatches and properties available for you. Um, if you don't have those showing up in your default, you can go to window and make sure that they are checked. So we've got swatches checked. Uh -huh. and 
properties. Okay, so both of those are here. Okay, so now that you've gotten a little bit of an idea of what Illustrator, how Illustrator set up, we're gonna go to File, Place, and bring that picture of your marks in. So I'm gonna grab this JPEG, which by the way, Illustrator wants a JPEG. If your phone makes an HEIC file, you won't be able to use that. I'll show you in another video um, how to make that change if you need to. Place. And then just click somewhere on your artboard. I'm going to zoom out by hitting Command minus on my keyboard. This image ended up being really big and I don't need it that large. So I'm going to scale it down by grabbing hold of this corner with my cursor and bringing it inward. What's happening is I can bring it inward um, and make it a different size, but it's also warping it and not keeping it in the same proportion. So I'm going to hit Command Z to undo back to my original. And this time when grabbing the corner, I'm hitting the Shift keyboard key. So Shift is being held down. And now it's staying in proportion without warping. So I'm bringing it down to about the size of my page. Great, okay. So I've got all of this canvas space. I'm going to zoom back in though, toward the middle. And hit object, image trace, make and expand. And what's gonna happen is that's gonna digitize these marks and make them shapes. So it'll say it will proceed slowly because it's a large image and I say, sure, that's fine, okay. Awesome. So now these are vectorized shapes. And I'm gonna hop over to properties and under quick actions, I'm going to ungroup them. So if I go back, right now they're grouped. If I grab here, it's gonna move as one big object. I wanna be able to pick up this individual shape. So to do that, I have to ungroup. And now I'm gonna click on just this black mark. select it, and with my move tool selected, I can grab it and move it around. I can also select the white of the paper and delete it, because I don't really need that anymore. Now these are all free to move. Now I want you just to play around with rearranging some of these shapes until you get something that you really like. And what we're going for is motifs of five or so elements. So each of these as individuals we'll call an element. And when they're grouped, we'll call them a motif. So come up with a few motifs, arrangements of elements, um, anywhere from two to let's say two to five elements within a motif um, and start to ar arrange them in, in aesthetically interesting ways. We'll stop there and next time play around with color.